All right, welcome to book club and prayer. I'm gonna start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are very grateful for this new day. We're grateful for the opportunity we have to start every day fresh. We're thankful for our personal growth and we're thankful for the time we have set aside to pour into that. We know that is so important and connecting to thee is so important as well. And we pray that we can make sure to do that every day as well. We are thankful for our relationships with thee. We're thankful that we get to connect with thee through the spirit. We pray that we can always grow and practice listening to the spirit so that we can um, be able to understand it even more every day. We're thankful for our team. We pray that they'll bless each person that they can have help with anything they're struggling with right now and that that will guide us to know how to help them. We are thankful for um, the excitement that's happening and we pray that that will help us to be guided to those who really need this and that we can share boldly and that we can that we can just follow thy spirit so closely and that thou will help us to know what to say and that we can ask for help when we need it. We're thankful for the many blessings. We pray that we can spend intentional time with our families, that they can have what they need and that we can have harmony in our lives. We love thee so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay. Ooh, I think we've hit, we're a little bit past halfway in this book. <clears throat> we're on page 150. Grab the timer. Okay. We are on, where are we? Are we at the top of the page? No, I can't remember. <laughs> I feel like. We're at, be willing to serve others. Ah, okay. Thank you. I couldn't remember. Okay, be willing to serve others. That's a good one. Few things are better for cultivating character and developing humility than serving others. So this is all about developing humility, right? Yes, I will value humility above all other virtues. Perspective matters. Okay. Putting others first, right? Oh, wait. Putting others first, right sizes our egos and perspective. If you are a leader, then you especially need to remember this because you can get used to being served by others and come to think you are entitled to it. In their book, Winning the Answers, Jack and Susie Welch describe people who swell because of their success and as a result develop the wrong kind of attitude towards others. They write, people who swell develop all sorts of unappealing behaviors. They're arrogant, especially toward their peers and subordinates. They hoard credit and belittle the efforts of others, don't share ideas except to show them off, and don't listen very well, if at all. Bosses can spot these team-killing behaviors a mile away, so it is no wonder that those with power and authority around you, as you put it, have consistently worked against you. You may be very smart and deliver stellar results on the job, but your swollen personality is the kind that undermines the morale in any organization and ultimately can really damage performance. How does a person who is used to winning remind himself that it's not all about him? By serving others. For me, service starts with Margaret and the rest of my family. Also, beginning in 1997, I've selected a handful of individuals every year who I can try to serve without receiving anything in return. And I also look for ways to serve my team since they work so hard to serve me and our vision every day. Be grateful. I am very conscious of the fact that I have been blessed and don't deserve what I've received in life. I am indebted to God and others, and because of that, I try to maintain an attitude of gratitude. That isn't always easy. Consultant Fred Smith, who mentored me for many years, helped me in this area. He said, We do not stay grateful because that makes us indebted, and we don't want to be indebted. The biblical phrase, sacrifice of thanksgiving, was a puzzle to me. Until I realized that gratitude is acknowledging that someone did something for me that I could not do for myself. Gratitude expresses our vulnerability, our dependence on others. 
A Chinese proverb says that those who drink the water must remember those who dug the well. Everything we do, every accomplishment we have, every milestone we pass has come in part because of the efforts of others. There are no self-made men or women. If we can remember that, we can be grateful. And if we are grateful, we are more likely to develop good character than if we aren't. Confucius asserted, humility is the solid foundation of all the virtues. In other words, it paves the way for character growth, and that sets us up for personal growth. These things are definitely connected. This totally reminds me of um, my contentment journal thing that I, I got. Can you see it? Yeah, it says contentment journal on it. It's by Rachel Cruz, who is the daughter of Dave Ramsey. And it's like three parts. The first part is grateful, like gratitude. So it like has um, journal prompts every day about gratitude. And then the next section is humility and it has journal prompts and then it has contentment. It's really interesting. I really love doing it. Um, Okay, number five, I will strive to finish well. Faithfulness matters. The final rung on my character ladder is the determination to keep building character and living at the highest standard until the day I die. I am endeavoring to do that by doing the right thing and becoming a better person every day. To do the right thing, I don't wait to feel like it. I recognize that emotion follows emotion. Do the right thing and you feel right. Do the wrong thing and you feel bad. If you take control of your behavior, your emotions will fall into place. Pastor and radio broadcaster Tony Evans says, If you want a better world, composed of better nations, inhabited by better states, filled with better countries, made up of better cities, comprised of better neighborhoods, illuminated by better churches, populated by better families, then you'll have to start by becoming a better person. That's always where it starts, with me, with you we focus on personal character, we make the world a better place. If we do that our entire lives, we've done the best thing we can do to improve our world. I think the whole world needs to hear that. <laughs> it's like so many fingers being pointed right now. Okay, the stronger your character, the greater your growth potential. Pulitzer Prize winning author Alexander, I don't know how to say that, Solzhenitsyn, I don't know if that spent eight years in prison during the Soviet era for criticizing Joseph Stalin. He went into prison an atheist and came out a person of faith. The experience didn't leave him bitter. It left him grateful for the development of his faith and the strengthening of his character. Looking back on the experience, he said, I bless you, prison. I bless you for being in my life, for there lying on rotting prison straw. I learned the object of life is not prospering as I had grown up believing, but the maturing of the soul. If we desire to grow and reach our potential, we must pay more attention to our character than to our success. We must recognize that personal growth means more than expanding our minds and adding to our skills. It means increasing our capacity as human beings. It means maintaining core integrity even when it hurts. It means being who we should be, not just being where we want to be. It means maturing our souls. Physician and author Orison Sweat Martin once described a successful person by saying, he was born mud and died marble. This gives us an interesting metaphor to use to look at various lives. Some people are born mud and remain mud. Sadly, some are born marble and die mud. Some are born mud, dream of marble, but remain mud. But many persons of high character have been born mud and died marble. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I hope that can be said of me at the end of my life, and I hope the same for you. Good, I like that. Mud to marble. Okay, applying the law of the ladder. <clears throat> Number one, assess where you have put most of your focus up until this point in your life. Has it been on improving on the inside or on the outside? Here are some of the ways you can do that. Compare how much you spent in the last 12 months on clothing, jewelry, accessories, and so on, versus how much you spent on books, conferences, and that sort of thing. Compare how much time you spent in the last month on personal and spiritual growth versus activities related to appearance. If you exercise regularly, examine what benefits you are striving for. Do they relate to inner health or outer appearance? <laughs> so interesting. I made that switch. It used to be about outer appearance, and now it's about inner health. <clears throat> Makes all the difference. 
If your assessment reveals more of an outward focus than an inward one, then determine how to shift your focus by adding time, money, and attention to the things that will make you grow, even if they do not show. Number two, plan to spend time in the coming months to regularly serve others. Putting aside your own agenda and putting others first will help you to develop humility, character, and others' mindedness. Start with your family if you aren't in the habit of doing things for them. Another idea is to set aside at least an hour every week for volunteering. Schedule it and then give it 100% of your focus while you're serving. Number three, U.S. Senator Dan Coats said, Character cannot be summoned at the moment of crisis if it has been squandered by years of compromise and rationalization. The only testing ground for the heroic is the mundane. The only preparation for that one profound decision which can change a life or even a nation is those hundreds of half-conscious, self-defining, seemingly insignificant decisions made in private. Habit is the daily battleground of character. What are you doing every day to develop the habit of character growth? Are you giving attention to your soul? Are you doing hard or unpleasant things? Are you practicing the golden rule and putting others ahead of yourself? Your character isn't set. You can improve it. It's never too late. You can change who you are and your overall potential by becoming a better person. I love that he always comes back to habits. Like almost every chapter, he comes back to habits. So good. Oh, the Love River Band is next. This is one of my favorites. I have like so much highlighted. Okay, I'm going to start. We have 30 seconds left. I might as well read a little bit. <laughs> All right, the law of the rubber band. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. Only a mediocre person is always at his best. When I was a kid growing up, I loved sports and I was a pretty decent athlete. I discovered basketball in fourth grade and it became my passion. I played it through high school. Like most kids in college, I was active and pretty fit. And in my 20s, I continued to play pickup basketball games with friends and added golf to my routine. But as I went farther in my career and got into my 30s and 40s, I didn't exercise and take care of my health as I should have. I paid for that when I was 51 and suffered a heart attack. All right. I love this chapter. This is one of my favorites. What do you think, April? Any ending thoughts of the law of the ladder? <coughs> uh, no. Nope. It's a good one. It's a good one. I like thinking about the values and characteristics. And I like how that story of the red, what, the red, just called the red, whatever, that group that like helps companies improve their values and how much just that's what people need. They need that. So interesting. Uh, I'm ready for the law of the rubber band though. The stretch. The yeah, I'm curious about this. It's a good one. So good. Okay. Thanks for hopping on April.